Okay. I'm going to share my screen. I'll minimize this. Starting my video. Hey, it saved my settings. Awesome. All right, all right. It looks like people are already starting to fill in. Thank you guys so much for coming and attending today. We're so excited. It looks like Gail's here. Greta's here. Greta, it's so good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Preston says the audio is good. Hey, Jeff. Good to see you guys. Oh, this is fantastic. I am I am really, really, really excited for today and today's presentation. Julia Ames is here. Julia Noyes. Lynette, good to see you. Uh, Rob Keegan, Sarah. Awesome. We're so glad that everyone's here. I'm going to wait uh, just a couple moments because I think there's a few more attendees to pop in, um, but we're so excited to be talking about email marketing, uh, rapidly creating emails. Um, it's something that I, uh, if you've ever been in a consulting meeting with us, we always do recommend using email marketing, really pushing that heavily just because of the solid return on investment that comes with it. Uh, we, we like it, we appreciate it. We know that not everyone has the time or is taking the time for it but any one of our clients that we have encouraged to do email marketing has seen the almost immediate return on investment and dividends. And so if we're able to help you guys just make that process faster, cleaner, slicker, uh, we're here to help you guys do that. Um, one thing I do want to mention is we do have, um, although we're not always um, fully sponsored, I do want to take a moment and just say, do go check out the Suida organization. Do go check out uh, the SBDC for all their information. Uh, Jennifer Heckman over at the city of Pullman, she has a great email list for um, upcoming COVID updates and things that are going on. Of course, the chamber usually promotes us on, um, or not promotes us, but promotes our events uh, on social media or other things. And so we do want to uh, give credence and a really big shout out and thanks. Like we're, we're, we're in this together. We're moving strong. Um, next week we have a webinar talking about how do we go back to normal um, and what does our messaging look like and how to really present yourself, present your brand in a very sensitive and progressive way. And so uh, if you guys haven't signed up for that one, uh, feel free to visit PullmanMarketing.com slash webinars. Um, it, I think it's going to be a really solid one. Um, once again, we're excited for today. I think uh, we've waited. Ooh, a couple more people have popped in. That's awesome. Breaker Great Chelsea just joined. Thank you everyone for joining today. And once again, we are recording today's webinar so that we can uh, send out the recording later. So in case you missed it, uh, this will be available. So. We're going to get started. I'm going to go over some ground rules, some kind of different things, and then we're going to go into the live demo portion. So um, that being said, a little bit about me. Um, you guys have probably seen this. I've actually had to update this slide um, because I'm getting older um, and I have to update this slide. Uh, but we've been doing web. We've been doing SEO and online advertising for a long time. Email marketing has been at the forefront of all this for years and years and years. And so we've just kept with it. Um, that being said, improved cooking, I am getting significantly better at cooking um, and my ukulele playing is getting better with COVID. Um, this is our team. Uh, at any given time, these individuals may assist on a email marketing campaign at some level. Uh, we do try to have this training and to run everyone through just some basic copywriting, uh, basic proofing, and just getting this creative juice flowing much faster. So during today's webinar, please, 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 as always, ask questions. Ask questions. Now, if it's really specific of like, oh, how would you write an email for this industry? We're going to be talking about that during the live demo portion. So you might hold on to that one. But if there's other things or clarifications that you need, feel free to pop those into the chat. Uh, we're going to hit those as fast and rapidly as we can. Uh, during the webinar, as always, we're providing ideas, methods, and suggestions. Um, if there's any legal things, um, we are not lawyers. 
Um, our heart is that we're able to help make help you be able to make educated decisions to make your working life even better than ever. Um, especially during this time, we know that things fluctuate a lot, um, but we want to provide you guys the tools and the resources to appropriate re appropriately reach out to your audiences. So for today, we're gonna go over some basic guidelines, some basics in MailChimp, how to organize your list. We're gonna run through that process. And then we're going to write an email live with a format called ADA. And we'll explain what that is a little bit later. Um, to get right into it, it's always good to have the right tools. Um, and today I'm actually, I pulled my keyboard um, out just because this is my absolute favorite keyboard. It is a uh, Microsoft keyboard from years ago. I actually have two of these just because I love typing on it. I absolutely love typing on it. And that being said, if you don't love your keyboard or you don't love the tools or you don't feel like you have the right tools to get the right job done, uh, it's time to take that and invest in that. So books that will help you. Um, these are three books that we do recommend. Uh, first of all is, and this, the slides will be sent to you afterwards, so don't worry about taking too many notes too quickly. Um, this book will teach you to write better is literally the name of the book. Um, I have every one of our staff people read it. It is fantastic for just getting into that mindset and it goes more in depth on the ADA format that I'm gonna show you in a little bit. Uh, Words That Sell is a really good way to build that vocabulary. And I, I wanna be really careful. It's not that we're trying to sell or advertise or market really hard but we wanna have a conceptual understanding of what works and what people are gonna be drawn to. The other book that we do recommend is a lot newer. Um, it's by Donald Miller called Building a Brand Story. And this is a way to help make sure that you're formulating your thoughts in a cohesive manner as you're trying to talk about your business or talk about your services. And so if you have your formatting, the vocabulary, and your messaging, that kind of helps give you a core package to be able to move forward with. Uh, one tool that we do recommend is Grammarly, um, or there's a lot of alternatives. So if there's one that you're, you really, 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 really like, um, go for it, do it. Um, Grammarly has been a really easy tool for us to just pop uh, content in and use and just get a quick proof. I will always say there is no better copy proofer than another person that you're trying to present to. Uh, one example that we did find, um, actually even writing the email for this event today, I'm gonna use this little spotlight tool, is writing email emails can be tedious. My spell check, my MailChimp check, and my Grammarly check did not catch that I had used the word email twice in a row, just because there was a slight variance. Um, one way that we do recommend for proofreading, if you are by yourself and you don't have someone to bounce these things off of, is to actually read it backwards. And so the example here being that you would read it, difference, a, make, really, last, email, can, comma, day, a, emails, many, so answer. And that jogs your mind so that you don't accidentally skip things. And that is how we caught an error like this in our writing. And so if you have a system of I do A, I do B, I do C, you can have the confidence to know that you're sending it off with relatively low or no problems or errors or clarifications needed afterwards, oops statements, all those things. So I'm gonna clear those drawings and we'll keep moving. All right, and then keyboard. Like I said, invest in a keyboard that you like. Um, I actually have two other keyboards in this room. Um, this is our conference room and so we like to have a couple keyboards for another person to use. I have typos like crazy on those keyboards. And so for today, for to do our demonstration, I really wanted to use a keyboard that I'm familiar with, that I'm comfortable with, and I can rapidly type with. Um, 
do, if you can, try out different keyboards. See what is working best for you. See what's working. Um, we do recommend just checking. Um, and then our ergonomics webinar, if you had attended that one, we talked at great length about it. Having focus time is the other thing that we would say. If you can take 15, 20 minutes, turn off the cell phone, turn off any other distractions, and that's all you have to do is just write an email. Even if you say, I can't leave my chair until this email is written. Now I can sit in my chair and I can think about it or I can kind of get bored of thinking about it. But set up ways or tools to keep you in your seat, undistracted and focused. Um, that will help you write these much quicker and to help you not have as many typos. I know that majority of my typos happen when I have an interruption and I lose my thought and then I come back to it. I never completed the first thought, but now I'm creating a second one and then they get merged together. So do try to have no distractions. The other thing when it comes to formatting that we want to keep in mind, and this isn't a fully hard rule, um, is that know that people and humans, we read in F-shaped patterns. Uh, this is also true for people even in a right to left uh, language like Arabic, they will read in kind of like a reverse F pattern. And what we mean by that is your first headline, the individual is going to read all the way over. They're going to skip down and read maybe 60 to 70 percent. Um, I need to adjust something real quick, pardon me. Sorry, one of our lights is being a little bit odd. Um, and so in that F-shaped pattern, we know then, okay, if I need to write an email, I need to be aware of how my readers are gonna read. I need to be aware of how I'm floating things. And the F-shaped pattern is the most common. Now, people do, there are other reading patterns that people have, and we're not trying to exclude, but we're trying to hit the majority. So getting into MailChimp, um, while I get that switched over, feel free to pop any questions into the chat um, while I'm getting us uh, set up and switched over. I think everyone can see my screen okay. Um, you guys get to see a little bit of the back end of Pullman Marketing, which we're, we're okay. There's not really any secrets here. Um, so. We like MailChimp as a email marketing service because it is primarily free. It is a solid tool with a solid reputation. When you start looking at other marketing platforms, they may have bad reputations for allowing spammers into it. Uh, the company called Aweber actually has one of the strictest policy sets and therefore they actually have one of the best email deliverability, and the best reputation in the industry as a whole, where there's others that may struggle. Um, we have liked a company called Mad Mimi. Um, they were picked up by GoDaddy a few years ago. Um, very intuitive, very easy to use tool, but you do have to pay $10 a month right from the get-go. With MailChimp, they allow you to scale a lot faster and a lot easier. And so once you get into MailChimp, the first thing that you have to do is to verify your sending account. Um, I'm gonna try and have this load up things as fast as possible. Um, but sometimes MailChimp is a little bit slow. Now, you also might be thinking to yourself, great, I, I don't have an email list. That's okay. Odds are you do have collected email addresses from different people. There are ways to build it and get that going. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop into what MailChimp calls the audience. Now you'll hear the term mail list and mail audience synonymously. And I, I will be using that term synonymously. Currently within MailChimp, if you have a brand new account, you're only allowed one email list or audience at a time. And that's okay. For the most part, you don't need multiple audiences until you get a little bit bigger. 
Um, because we are an older account, we actually have two. And so I'm using one as a dummy. And if there's nothing in here, they just have a big button that says import. So we're going to click import and it gives us a few options. And so we can upload a CSV document. We can pull in from uh, Google Drive or if you're using another email service provider, they will allow you to grab that data and pull it right into MailChimp. Or you can actually just copy and paste data into the sheet. And so that's the one I'm gonna use. I'm gonna show you how we can do this a little bit rapidly. So I'm clicking continue in the bottom right corner. And so then it's just saying paste contact information. So I'm going, I did preload some of my dummy email address. And I'm just going to paste those in. The main key item here is that I'm keeping the formatting consistent. That it is first name, last name, email at pullmanmarketing.com. And so if you're, even if you just come here and sit down and say, okay, well, oh, Bob, Bob would try to be okay with me adding them to the list, or I have permission from Bob to put them on my list. I'll add uh, Bob Miller at bob at bobscompany.com. You can just sit here and actually load these things in really quickly. It will always ask you um, that your billing plan may be automatically upgraded. Uh, you don't have to worry about that unless you're uploading over 500 contacts at a time. Uh, the likelihood of exceeding that is a little bit rare. Uh, continue to match. And so matching is where we tell the system what we're doing. Oh, so this one did not like the format. It sees everything as one line. So now we get to go back and that's a-okay. There's a back button in the bottom left corner that I'm gonna hit. And I'm just gonna put these in and I'm going to put in commas that is an expected format of the system. If you are pulling from an Excel spreadsheet or another sheet type system, it will do that more automatically for you. But if you do run into an error, it's not the end of the world. Just take a step back and you can fix it right on the fly. So the system in matching will automatically pick out the email address but it doesn't know which field is first name or last name. And so there's just this little button for edit. I'm going to go column by column. I'm gonna say the first column is first name and I have to click save. And then I'm going to select last name and you have to click save. If you don't hit save, it will just move on to the next column and then tell you to pop back and fix the other one. So on that one, just make sure you hit the save. And then we're gonna to continue to organize. So tagging is the primary system that we're gonna to use to organize our email list. You may have really broad tags, such as, oh, these are just my newsletter people or, oh, 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 these are a prospect. They might be a cold lead. Sometimes you do want to have more specific things on there just so that you know for reference if I need to come back to it. So for today, the way we typically do it, and you can see it down there a little bit, is we use a standardized format of year, month, day, and then I'll say webinar email marketing. That way, if I need to send an email only to this small subsection of my email list, I can target them directly. Um, I might have a special on a book or we might do uh, web marketing uh, 201 where we go over even more concepts for email marketing. So I want to make sure I re-engage those who already took an interest in what we're doing. 
I highly recommend being really specific with all of your tag sets. Because to me, a prospect is different than a prospect from last year versus last month versus yesterday. So once again, having really specific things is really, really good. We use this all the time. And for delegating, it makes it really easy for me to ask Preston or Rebecca or any of the other members on our team to say, hey, make sure to engage this group. We did a webinar on ergonomics. Make sure to email that list or email that subsection of the list so that they get those updates. So once that's done, do make sure that they are subscribed or if there's other updates that you need to make that that is done. And then we're gonna go ahead and click continue to review in the bottom corner. And this just gives us another review section that this is the method. We're only doing three columns. We've already applied our tags and we know that they are going to become subscribed to our list. In the bottom right corner, I'm gonna select the import button. So now we have our three people all ready to go in our email list. So let's get started writing an email. I, once we click on campaigns, we can select our current audience in our top left, whether we want to be a subsection or all the audiences. For right now, we're just working with our events. That's kind of our play test area. Is there a limit of number of tags to one contact? Jeff Perry asks. That is a really good question. If there is, I have not found it yet. Um, when I've worked in MailChimp and other CRM systems, um, I think there was a limit of 60 inside of Infusionsoft when I last used it. We didn't hit that barrier, um, but in there, I think we had loaded up to 20 to 30 tags uh, during a migration that we did. Um, so usually we don't see too many limitations for that. That's a really good question though. Um, I would say if the tags stop making sense to go in and clean and pull those tags out directly, um, but as long as the tags make sense and they're concise and specific, I, I, don't, I don't have an issue with it. So in this top right, I'm gonna go ahead and create campaign. And then it's gonna ask me what type of campaign. So there's a lot of options here. It's not scary. For today, we're just gonna do a basic email. We don't need to worry about the ads or the landing pages or the surveys. A lot of those have other custom automation features, but to get you going and begin those first touch points with your audience, we're gonna go ahead and just click email. And then we, got, we have to name the campaign. So I'm gonna say today's date, and then I'm gonna say testing for email marketing webinar. And I'm going to begin. All right. So now we have to say, okay, who's our recipients? We're gonna choose an audience as our events. And then we're going to select the subsection or the tag that we wanted. So we have the 2020-0505 webinar email marketing group that I want to use. And then I can use the personalize to field. I will say you do have to be careful with this feature. In general, when you're using personalized fields, your email open rate is higher. And the reason is when people see, hello, Bob, it looks like it was a personalized letter or a personalized email. 
What happens though is not everybody gives you their first name and last name accurately. You may have gotten um, J. Miller at uh, Miller's construction site. Well, if I just type give everything first name, well, then that looks a little bit weird. Um, so there's, I would say to make sure that your list is clean and it looks good and that that is taken care of. And even if you know who Jay is, go in and fill in his first name completely so that it doesn't look wonky when you're sending these out, if you are choosing to use the personalized field. So we know that my merge tag is good. I'm gonna go ahead and click save that we're using it. If you're wanting to send from a different email address, this is that verification thing I wanted to bring up. And you may have to do this on your first email blast send. Go ahead and click verify domain. And they're just gonna send an email verification to make sure that you're a real person, real human, and that your domain email is working. Um, they are, MailChimp is very good at working with you. And other companies do have more complicated verification systems and steps to help ensure email deliverability. Part of the reason they do that is because they don't always have the best reputations for email deliverability. MailChimp is a reputable enough company that at base level, they just need you to verify that that email address works and they're okay with it. So I'm going to say Adam Jones from Adam at PullmanMarketing.com. And then we're going to add a subject. So this is where we get to begin that creative writing process. Um, they do give you some suggestions. Try to use no more than nine words. Try to use no more than one emoji. And uh, try to avoid using punctuation marks. So uh, for today, um, I th oh, what was I going to use? I was going to use uh, tumblers. Tumblers. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen those Yeti Yeti branded tumblers, but I thought as our first demo, we would just write a email for selling tumblers, um, and then we can do an example with one of the uh, attendees. So, what do we want to say about tumblers? They're cool. We know the brand. Uh, if you haven't seen Yeti branded. Tumblers, they do have a lot of creativity. Um, they're a lot of fun. Uh, they're vacuum sealed, stainless steel. Um, they're really pretty high quality tumblers, drinkware. Um, you've probably seen them in the stores, they're around. So they are ultra durable drinkware. Double wall vacuum means insulation means this drinkware will lock in perfect temperatures for hours on end. Okay, so to me, that we might be able to say how you can always have a good temperature drink. Well, okay, that's not very, that's kind of bland. So then we gotta make this, we gotta make this a little bit better. So we might say your awesome tumbler awaits. Okay. That's, that's getting a little bit closer, uh, but I, I don't know that that fits the branding or the imagery or the way that they even themselves brand and messaging. So if we said uh, your mystical Yeti awaits, I'm actually okay with that because we're going to be looking also at the preview text. When we're doing this writing process, the goal of your first headline is to make people read line number two. The goal of line number two is to make them read line number three and get them reading through everything and making a decision. So if my line number one can pull you to line number two, then I just have to make sure line number two looks good. And remember in your email box, you only have a thin piece for people to read. So we have to make sure it's catchy without being ugly clickbait. 
so then I might say, um, well, okay, so we're selling custom branded Yeti tumblers. So then we can actually just say custom branded Yeti tumblers. Okay, so <clears throat> what's our next step? How do we want to entice someone? What are we going to do to make them click? Um, usually that's going to be a emotional or financial poll that we're going to do. So we could say uh, custom branded Yeti tumblers that you love. That's not bad. Uh, that your customers will love. That's a little wordy. Uh, let's see here. How else can we do this? So those are emotional. What if we went with price? If we did a price poll for someone, usually it's really hard for me to buy something. Like I'll be in Walmart and I'll literally put things back uh, because by the time I get to the checkout aisle, I'm like, man, do I really need it? Do I, I don't know. The price is really maybe not quite where I want it. So then what would make me buy is a price I can't resist. Okay. So do I, we could say Yay tumblers at $50. Just throwing a price out there. Well, shoot, I just gave away all the information in my email subject line and my preview. I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to entice them to open. I want to entice them to click. So if I want them to do something that they can't resist, custom branded Yeti tumblers at a price you can't resist. And I, I'm going through an editing process here. A lot of times you just do need to think out loud and work through it, but don't overthink it. Speak plainly. Uh, when we did uh, journalism classes and even when we do uh, marketing campaigns, our goal is to write for a sixth grade education level at bare minimum. If your audience demands it to be a higher education level, do it, do it, know your audience, know your audience. At your baseline level though, the language should be very plain, very straightforward. When we say your mystical Yeti awaits, okay, well, what does that mean? Oh, custom bread Yeti tumblers at a price I can't resist. Okay, well, what's the price? I wanna I want see, see what's in here. So we have our subject. Now let's go and design. Let's, let's work on the meat of this email. That being said, MailChimp does have a lot of different templates and designs that you can use. Um, for different purposes, we do a lot of different things. For today, I'm going to use the most basic formatting to show you that you can still sell with a basic formatting. It doesn't have to be a multi-million dollar operation. It doesn't have to have tons of graphics. It just needs to have the right messaging. All right. So I do want my logo in there. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the logo. And I'm gonna insert it. Ooh, that's a little bit big. So inside of MailChimp, your left side is your preview of what the email is gonna be. On the right side is where you can make edits and changes. So I'm gonna click on the logo that I just inserted. And this says image display size. Yeah, I, I wanna tone it down a little bit. The, it, it was at a size that was a little bit overwhelming for me. I also want to make sure that there's a link for this image. So I'm going to click link so that anytime somebody uses it or they happen to tap it or click it, that they're going to my website. I, I want people at my website. That's where I want people to be. So now it's time to design our email. And the way that we recommend at base level to do these is ADA. ADA stands for attention, interest, 
desire, and action. This is everything that my teachers in English class and everywhere else told me not to do. Um, yet it is the format that really helps engage people. Um, and even as I've grown our own business, I've used this format for almost everything. We've won uh, proposals, we've done one business because we were not belaboring something, that there was a point to each thing that we were doing. And so once I stopped writing five page uh, English papers for, for my proposals and started writing in this formatting, it radically changed it. And when you follow this format, it's easy to write quickly and self check. So we are going to get right into, I'm gonna pull this down just so that we keep our illustration. So, <clears throat> So we're selling custom branded tumblers. So in my mind, you are widget factory and you want widget factory put on your tumblers. So how do I get your attention? How do I entice you? How do I grab you? So we can say, here's how to take your uh, company to the next level. Well, okay, so that's a little vague. Here's how I could take your company to the next level and, and it's, it is branding. Oh, okay, well, it's branding. So let's just say, let's take your branding, not your company, your branding. Well, and the drinks do do better. So let's say branding and drinks to the next level. Okay, so that, that grabs my attention. That grabs my attention. You told me from the beginning, your, mat, your mystical Yeti awaits. Okay, what is my mystical Yeti? I need a tumbler at a price I can't afford. And if it's a price I can't afford, or that I can't resist, and it would take my branding to the next level, okay, you have my attention, tell, tell me more. I, I'm interested, now help me build my interest. Help me to understand why I do need this product. So we can say these tumblers are the um, finest stainless steel vacuum sealed uh, drinkware items taking retail by storm. Help customers fall in love with your brand by providing them an even better product. Well, okay, so we're not really giving them a better product. It's the same tumbler. Um, these tumblers are the finest stainless steel, vacuum seal, drinkware items uh, that have taken retail by storm. Help customers fall in love with your brand by providing them the product they want, uh, deserve, desire. That's where that best uh, words that sell book will help you have this vocabulary to, okay, so what are synonyms or what are things that I could put in here? Um, items that people want. Um, I, I like the idea of a product that they deserve because the idea is that your customers deserve the best. That's why they do business with you. They want the best and you're the best. So then if you're helping them fall in love with this, then we want to provide them the best way to fall in love. Because the worst thing you can do is provide a really craptastic uh, plastic tumbler that's gonna melt the first time you put coffee in it. You don't wanna throw that in. That's awful, why, why would you do that? So we're taking a product that already has a high trust value and putting your logo on it. And with that, then you're creating this value proposition of 
I am quality because I'm associated with quality. And so we're, we're building this brand understanding along the way. So I, I'm okay with this. Um, Aziz also says people love titles such as here is how five ways question titles are good attention grabbers. And absolutely they are. They absolutely are. Uh, we see them work all the time. Uh, our, our only concern um, is we do know other marketers who use those types of titles as clickbait. Um, and we always want to make sure that we are being reputable uh, and coming across as reputable as possible and having that good credibility. Um, so if you're able to, the, the end goal of either asking a question or having kind of these leading sentences is to pique that curiosity. We want to make them so curious, legitimately curious based on targeting that they click in. Uh, questions are an easy way to do that. And sometimes just uh, unusual statements like your Miss Fulietti um, will help do that grab. So then we have their attention. We've, get, we've interested them. Now we want to give them a desire. What does a business owner desire? And usually what we want to do, and Don Miller talks about this in his book, is to make the customer feel like a champion. Or, or the primary champion of a story. So I'm going to use those exact words. Uh, we're going to keep this really simple. We don't need to over-exaggerate. We can say, be the champion and never have a lukewarm drink again. Okay, so that's a baseline statement. All right, so be a champion, never have a lukewarm drink. Uh, lukewarm is hyphenated, I believe. Uh, be a champion. Position and know your company is the champion. And bonus, never have a lukewarm drink again. Oh, okay. So we're telling them that they want the positioning well, okay, so let's make this simpler. Position your company as a champion with amazing drinkware. And bonus, never have a lukewarm drink again. Okay, that, depending on the individual, this actually might be enough. The, they may already know about tumblers, they already know that it's a good drink. And it's like, okay, yeah, I know I should be doing this. Yeah, and the, and the cups are good, the cups are good. Um, this thing, I brewed it right before this webinar started and it's already getting lukewarm. It's, it's okay. So actually, a Yeti tumbler sounds really good to me right this second. So let's, let's go, let's move on with this one for now. We might come back to it on a second read. And that's okay. It's okay if you get stuck and you're like, okay, this is good enough. I want to come back. Great, move on. Keep, keep the process moving. Don't get stuck to the point where you're unable to complete your email or complete the assignment that you have in front of you. And so we know that this step is action. We want at the end of all of our emails, or somewhere in our emails for people to take an action. Now, that might be as simple as please call, click here, uh, rebates, no, apply for rebates. Those, those are all pretty easy action statements. We, we, can, we can dress this up a little bit better because we, we had a little bit of a weak desire we can also say, please reach out to your sales rep. Receive 40% off your next order offer expires 
five ten point point. Okay. Oh, so A, we have to fulfill our promise. We said that there was going to be an offer that you could not, a price that you could not resist. We need to be honest. We need to have those things in there. If your offer isn't good, okay, well, then we need to work on the offer and, and change it and adjust it a little bit. But hey, if you're able to reach out to your sales rep, oh, call, call. When you can get someone on the phone, odds are you can usually close your sale better than doing an all online process. And during the season, people are wanting some phone calls. Um, I do mentor college students, and I have students that dropped off uh, November, December, January, who are now kind of coming out of things and saying, hey, actually, uh, I, I need someone to talk to, or I'm, I'm more willing to do phone calls. I, I was only texting before, but let's, let's do a phone call. I want to do a phone call, video chat, whatever it is. There's this desire right now for interaction. Let's, let's make that happen. Let's make that happen. And so then receive 40% off. Okay, so you're saying this offer is pretty solid, but give urgency. If you can inspire urgency in your action step, you are all the more better. And we say, hey, you know, you have five days or five business days or however you wanna do it, or hey, man, this expire, we're only doing a flash sale, call your rep today, this is amazing call them in two days or this offer is gone. That helps to push and inspire that action step. Aziz asks a really good question. Uh, what is your general recommendation to transition from newsletter to a landing page to read more? Some newsletters get very, very long. I absolutely, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. What we do recommend is to continue to tease. Uh, and what we mean by that is if the goal of my headline, my subject line was to get you to the preview text and my goal was to get you into the email, then my next goal is to get you to click a link. Whatever content you need to make that occur, make it happen. Um, once you practice Ada a fair amount, you can make Ada happen in a single sentence. You can, you can make it happen in a single sentence, maybe two sentences if it's worth it or needed, but you can condense and concise that amount of information and make it really easy for people to go into it. Um, and then once you pop them to the website, the main issue that we run into with landing pages is they're not always relevant to the email newsletter content. Sometimes you write something really specific in your newsletter and then you drop them to a very generic general landing page. We would never recommend that. If we're saying tumblers, I'm going to drop you a link to the exact tumbler, the exact size, the exact color that I am running this sale on. I don't, I don't want to give you the general Yeti product page because then well, shoot, not all of them are 40% off. Not all of them are the right colors that we want. Uh, not all of them are the right sizes. Well, okay, if I told you to go get the one that's on sale, now I'm making you do work. That's not, that's not how we do a sale. That's not how we generate business. We wanna make it as simple and as fast for these individuals as possible. So in that, I'm going to, I hope that answers your question is either. There's a lot more to it. Um, a book that I would recommend, and I'm going to drop it in chat, is called Convert Every Click. It's really, really good. Um, and it, it helps you with those transitions from a newsletter, uh, your search engine results page, or other locations, and making sure that that content is reflective and consistent. Uh, once again, I said at the start, consistency is the key that we want. Consistency is the thing that we always want to strive for. So um, I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Uh, we're going to, we'll eventually be uh, putting this in. 
Uh, Preston dropped the author name. Thank you. I think he has the copy of the book on his desk, I'll be honest. Um, I think he keeps that one very close because we, we do reference it quite a bit. For a digital marketing company, uh, we read a lot of books. So I'm going to go and do a, send a test email. Now you might ask, well, Adam, we already proofed it. We already looked at it. We already edited it. I, I have been bitten so many times by not doing the send test email function. Even if I'm copying and pasting almost the exact same email as something before, you have to send a test email just to see what it looks like. So I'm going to drop this into um, a different folder for myself. Okay, and we can see your mystical Yeti awaits. If I had written anything else, it would have been cut off. So I actually feel pretty good about the length of my subject line. Now Gmail shows this very different. Uh, Outlook on your desktop application is very different. Uh, your mobile phone is gonna be very different. So if you can condense it and keep it as short as possible, knowing that that's gonna be kind of an issue, that's a really key point to get. And so then we see your Miskel Yeti awaits custom branded tumblers at a price you, oh, I don't say a price you can't resist. I, it's not showing me all that information, but that still gives me that urge of a price I what? I, I wanna know more. I, I gotta click the email. So then we have our email here. So I always come in and I'm gonna click the link, make sure the link works. If you have any links, click all of them. Um, so I have a few different ones at the bottom to go through. Always click every link and just do the testing. What do we what do we see here though? And I, I'm gonna do the zoom drawing again here in just a GIF. But hopefully you guys notice a familiar pattern that is here. Okay, here's my drawing. Uh, I wish you'd give me a thicker one. Can I do it? Uh, darn, it's not. You don't always. Oh, there we go. And that is that there's actually an F-shaped pattern in the way that the content is written. And so going back to the way humans read and the way we understand and interpret information, I want you to read that first one. Here is how to take your branding and drinks to the next level. Oh, I forgot a period. Okay, we'll go in and fix that. These tumblers are the finest stain stainless steel vacuum sealed drinkware items. Ugh, that's a long sentence. But if I, I can write a really good sentence and a really good paragraph, and people who are gonna read it are gonna read it. The people who don't are not gonna miss anything because the desire portion comes next. Here's how to take your branding and drinks to the next level. Okay, if I'm skim reading the F-shaped pattern, position your company as a champion with amazing drinkware and a bonus, you never have a lukewarm drink again. And then your skim reader is going to just continue down and read action, call, offer expires. So Ada and the way that it's designed actually follows the pattern that we read as humans. So if, if we're writing in this formatting and we're already optimizing for the way people read, this is a win-win-win strategy and you don't have to worry or concern yourself a whole lot. There's not a lot of anxiety that needs to come into play on whether this is good or bad or if people are gonna read every single little thing. We, we can work through that. And there's you're gonna be able to do this much more rapidly following this methodology. Now, one thing I do want to do is I am going to pull up Grammarly. Um, I mentioned it as a tool that we use. 
I do use it pretty regularly. It doesn't catch everything. But even though I've been editing myself and we're going through this process, I'm just going to pop it in here and see what did I miss. Okay, vacuum sealed. When I was writing, I did not do a hyphen. It does need to be hyphened. Uh, we are not paying for premium. Uh, premium, I think, is actually kind of expensive. Um, but it's telling me my punctuation and there's some word choice. Um, I do know that we did need to edit the I up, the period up there. Um, and you know, if my word choice or complex sentences are a little bit there, I have a feeling it's in this section. I can cheat the system a little bit by just removing it and seeing if those errors went away and all of the errors went away. So I know my interest section is the one that is less quality. So then I can come in and make any changes or edits. Um, okay, so I could say Yeti tumblers to be more specific and concise. Um, I like the finest. Um, they're gonna give me a few other words. I like finest because there's a certain amount of elegance uh, that comes with it, well, which you wouldn't normally apply to Tumblr, so I'm okay with that. Um, taken retail by storm. Maybe we don't need that. Maybe, maybe we can get rid of that. Help customers fall in love with your brand. Okay, do we, do we need a comma there? I don't know that we do. And so now it's just nitpicking me on word choice. Okay, well, if my word choice issue that it's giving me is based on the way I want to present this email, this brand, and I know my audience, okay, I, I feel pretty confident that I'm going to come back into edit design and I'm going to drop in the changes that we've made. All right, and then we're going to save and close. I'm going to hit continue. And then I'm going to send another test email. After every change, after every edit, do send a test email. Now, MailChimp will lock you. I think it's either six or eight times. You can only do six or eight test emails. Um, so do be aware of that limitation, but it's good to know what's going on and what you're doing. So I'm going to come check this out again. Yeah, that feels a little better. I, I like how this got tightened up quite a bit. I think it reads better and I think it's a little bit sharper. So then it looks good. I test all the links, make sure that they're all working. You never want a bad link. And then we're going to click either schedule or send. Um, if you go ahead and click the send button, it'll always give you a confirmation. Uh, or you can do a schedule. And so I can say, hey, you know, send it at uh, 345 or 11 a.m. Um, lately, what we've been seeing is we've liked sending emails at 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, for some clients, we are specifically doing 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Um, this is something that you do need to play around with it. Um, and so you can begin pushing out these. Um, Jeff Perry asks, I don't think you can schedule with the free account, can you? So if you let MailChimp optimize for engagement because they they track uh, users email addresses so say um, say Bob say Bob is signed up for like 15 other newsletters and MailChimp knows when Bob goes through his email they'll send the email to Bob based on his past history on other accounts your email to be in with the others and so You'll have five emails go out today, 10 emails go out tomorrow at different hours and times of the day. That's what that stand uh, upgrade cost is. But you can just say, okay, send out a specific time. And then just go ahead and hit 
the schedule send button. Uh, typically, we do like to put things on a 15 minute timer where it's, hey, you know, I am okay to hit the send button now. I'm going to have it send in 15 minutes because, oh, hey, pre maybe Preston made an update. Oh, maybe we need to adjust the URL or, oh, hey, maybe we caught something. It's nice to have a little bit of time in between. It's nice to have that little bit of time uh, just in case anything ever happens. <clears throat> so that being said, would you guys like us to write with you an email, uh, a mock email that you might write for someone in your audience? Uh, if there's any volunteers in the chat, we are super happy to work with you and go through this process so more people can see uh, what this looks like. That being said, we would unmute you. You'd be allowed to talk. Uh, Jeff Perry says he is in. All right. All right, Jeff, I'm going to have it allowed to talk. All right, Jeff, All right. are you there with us? Yeah, can you hear me, Adam? Yeah, yeah, I got you loud and clear, loud and clear. Awesome. So, uh, clarifier, um, Jeff, can you, in two sentences, tell us about your business? Yeah, so my business is around leadership and career development for engineers and technical professionals. How's that? One sentence. Hey, that's awesome. That's awesome. So leadership for technical professionals and how, how, how big is your list or is it growing? Like where, what's your list status right now? Yeah, so I, I do use MailChimp and my list has, um, I think about 60 subscribers at the moment. Awesome, that's awesome. That's, that's fantastic. And to clarify on that, we, if, even if your email list has like five people, write, write daily emails, begin, begin bouldering that. Um, so, okay. So you have 60 people. Uh, what's your open rate like? Uh, I think it's anywhere between 30 and 45 ish percent usually. Okay. Okay. So you have, uh, 20 to 30 people that are pretty genuinely interested, um, and are engaging on a regular basis. Um, do you, do you know, like, you know if it's the same people each week or daily uh, or does it kind of rotate the unique individuals? I know I can drill down into that data on an individual level and see which people are actually opening stuff, mm -hmm. but I don't uh, look at that very often to know who's engaging frequently. It, MailChimp yeah. also has like a way to score contacts and I don't really know what that means. Like it gives them a number of stars. Yeah. Explain that. Yeah, I'll show that real quick because that, that part is important. Um, so if I look at my three contacts, my three new contacts, um, it'll, it'll show you this bar. And if you scroll over, it gives them a contact rating on a star system. Well, what, what this means is everyone starts at star two they can move up and down. So if you, if you have a person whose email inbox is constantly full and undeliverable because it's full, it will drop the member's rating. But if they're constantly opening emails, it'll bump them to a three. If they're opening emails and clicking links, it'll eventually bump them to a four. And if they've been on your list for like a year and they're like opening every email, then they'll probably get bumped to a five. Um, so that's one way for you to discern who's actively engaging versus not engaging. Okay. Cool. I'll be honest, my, my, whoever's at number five on my account is probably my mom. Uh, if I'm being really honest on that one. <laughs> I don't think my mom's a five. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's help her. Let's help her with, a, with an awesome subject line. So uh, <laughs> that's, 
the subject line is one of the points that people belabor the most. Um, but I think with with a little ingenuity can can go a long way. So um, do you have any, do you want me to kind of go with a uh, mystery unknown product or is there a product that you want us to write for today? Yeah, so uh, one of the ways I'm currently expanding at the moment is into more career coaching for people who are looking for uh, jobs and need help with interviewing and stuff. And so um, we can develop something around that. Okay. Okay. So career coaching. So tell me, tell me a little bit more about it. So um, is this because of COVID or is it because of uh, a lot of people are just switching jobs because it's a good time to switch or tell, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So, so COVID certainly is a, is a piece of it. Um, and uh, it's very much related to some of the leadership pieces that I do. Often, often when I'm working with uh, some clients, they're looking, they're trying to figure out, hey, how do I kind of upgrade my career in my current position? But sometimes that's not always possible. So we also are looking at, okay, how would we navigate an appropriate career swap there? And so uh, some people I'm working with in that capacity, other people I work with in the capacity of like, hey, I need to find a job that and really trying to seek clarity on how do I find the job that's the right fit for me and what I want to do for the rest of the, for the next step in my career, at least. Um, and so uh, the career coaching can, can take the form of, you know, getting clarity on what they're looking for, uh, diving into job search strategies and networking, um, networking with the right people, actually applying for jobs, resumes and LinkedIn upgrades and stuff like that. And then even into interviewing preparation and, uh, and negotiation strategies in the end. So, so if we did say something like find the right fitting career step. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that a pretty accurate thing or is that, or am I being crazy? Um, you're not crazy, Adam, but, uh, um well let me test out i mean uh let me test out one for you that i'm, that I'm thinking about so um you know because a lot of times when you're trying to write kind of this interest piece you're trying to kind of access the the pain or the discomfort that the potential customer has right yeah yeah so um so a lot of people know that kind of have this feeling like there's a career change that's needed, but don't actually know what the next step is. So um, I might ask a question like, no, do you know a career change is needed, but don't know what it is or something like that. So, okay. So that, that's really good. So we, we want to hit a pain point. We want to make sure that it's a relevant item. So if we know that, and, and remember, our in when we're working with this, the subject line is to help us get to the preview text. That's all we're trying to do. We're not trying to sell them on anything else. We just need them to read the next line. So if we say find the right fitting career step, does that need to be punchier or is that about right for your audience? Um I would, I would probably seek to make it a little punchier than that. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I like that a little bit better. The right fit career step, you know, you need. Yeah. Ooh, and I, and I, I actually like that better too. Um, I just, I just don't know your audience. So I'm, I'm, uh, we're, we're right and blind together. And so then it was said, okay, so that pulls us to line number two, discover the path out of your current tedious job. Um, we could, uh, I don't, I don't want to say current in case they don't have a job. <laughs> um, I want to be sensitive. Um, so we might say tedious routine. Sure. Is there is there something else that they would identify with? Um, you could 
yeah, do the, the path out of the tedious job or, or um, to use a more positive way, you could discover the path to your next destination or something like that, um, if we want to go the other way. All right, but we want to we want to hit a pain point, right? Sure. Yeah, no, let's tedious routine is cool. Okay. All right. Probably kind of lowercase the, the I and the right. What's that? Should probably lowercase. Yeah, there we go. All right. Do you like emojis? Absolutely. They actually radically increase open rates by like 80 to 90 percent. Wow. Okay. It's it's really silly. I I wish I wish it was different. I'll, I'll put, I don't want to put it there. Uh, I wish it was different. Um, but especially in Gmail, because Gmail gives you a much longer path to work with. Mm -hmm. um, and the emojis break up your quick scans of your email and pulls your eyes right into it. Um, so especially if you know your audience is using a lot of Gmail or G Suite accounts, absolutely always use an emoji, at least one. Um, I typically try to use like one plus three or three plus one. So like one line has three, one line has one, and then alternate. Uh, for you and your audience, I don't know that that totally fits, but I like having just this one. Sounds good. Um, so we have that, the right fit career step you know you need. There probably needs to be a comma in there, I'll be honest. Uh, but we'll, we'll come back to that. All right, so then I'm actually going to go see it's more than engineering, right? Uh, more than is all one word, and then there is a dash, yeah. Yep. Okay, so I want to grab your, I want to keep us in the loop. I want us to use, use your logo real quick. Yeah. All right, save image. Um, and even doing these little steps of having the logo in there can really help to keep you uh, focused in. Because if, if you keep having this idea of like, oh yeah, I gotta get the logo, I gotta get the logo, I gotta get the logo, um, that will distract you during the writing process. So some of those little things, just, just take care of it on the fly. Um, all right. So I actually like the bigger text. It helps me a little bit. All right. So we want to build their attention, right? Yeah. So will you, will you, do you recommend or not recommend using the same title that you used for the subject line of the email back into the actual email body? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, what I typically like to do for that is to have the title be a lead in for the first sentence. Okay. Because um, once again, we're going back to that idea of subject line one brings me to line two, which brings me to line three. So then if I, if you click the email and you're right back at line one, well then I'm gonna skip line two and three because it's the same information I just read. Okay. And so, so mentally we wanna keep them on a train uh, is a good analogy. Okay, cool. Uh, and so, we had said, get out of the routine of your tedious job or uh, the discover, discover the right path. Ooh, okay, so, but we can say discovering your next career doesn't have to be hard. Okay. Okay. So base level, we're trying to take, take away anxiety, right? Yeah. So we, and we can phrase this a little bit differently. Discovering your next career doesn't have to be hard. Uh, uh, 
We'll walk you through it. Okay. Or we can take that or we can say, here are the steps to discovering your next career. That keeps it on a pretty positive note. I, I know you like a lot of really positive language, right? Yeah. Um, I am title casing just because my eyes, um, that helps me a little bit. Here are the steps to discovering your next career. How do you feel about that? Is that accurate? Is that inaccurate? Sure. We could build something around that. Yeah. Okay. So what, uh, give me a step. What's, what's the first step I need to change my career, Jeff? Yeah. So I, I would say number one is gain, uh, gain clarity. So, uh, that usually is, is a matter of asking yourself the questions about the things that you really value. Um, which, uh, a lot of people start too far looking into, um, you know, the, the things like, like money and whatnot, but, uh, location and job satisfaction and job roles and, uh, work life balance. Those things are generally a lot more, uh, you know, really important to, to put together and ask questions about where, where are you going to rank those different aspects? So then if we say, if you have lost the why, why you do your job, take time to get the perspective you need to take the next step. Okay. Is that, is that accurate? Is that inaccurate? Yeah, that's great. Okay. And we'll, we'll want to chop it down a little bit, but that, and that's me trans trying to translate what you're saying to a little bit of a, of a simpler nomenclature. Sure. Um, now I know you're speaking to engineers. Um, I, I am not an engineer, uh, <laughs> but I, I did, I did okay at WC translating engineer speak. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so what? Tell me what step two to change my job, change my career. Yeah, so create a job search strategy. Or more like utilize a proven job search strategy or something like ooh, that. Ooh, 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 ooh. I like that. You use a proven, and I, I'm even going to like come in and underline that. Um, job. Yeah, it's, I need to get that to turn off for the rest of it. Okay. Is a proven job search? I actually, I really like that phrasing. Use the proven. Uh, just as a quick thing, uh, we have a question. Uh, I am supposed to do a weekly newsletter. Is there a general length for weeklies that you would recommend? I don't want to write more than recipients will actually read. The, the rule of thumb that we do, and I, I've been trying to find good analogies for this because it, it is a little bit hard, is that it needs to be long enough to cover the details, but short enough to keep it interesting. Um, and I think TV shows are a really good example of that, where you can totally tell when people are just putting in fillers. You know, you don't need 10 seasons of a show, you really only needed three. Um, that, that length is too long. And so, as long as you're covering the details of what you need to cover, you don't need to make it longer than that. Um, you also don't want to shortchange your audience. Um, that's, that's the other side of the spectrum to be worried about. And if you do feel that the newsletter is getting too long, at that point, uh, just break it into subsections and then direct them to blog articles or to the full length pieces. Um, uh, like Aziz mentioned earlier, we, we want to help break that up and make a transition to a longer format read 
if they're really interested in it. Uh, okay, so coming back to this, and actually, what? All right, we want to use a proven job prediction strategy. So the number three, the, this is really easy. Does that does, does number three sound good, Jeff? Sounds great. That that's an easy way to round out your list of three or five of like just pitch your thing as the last object. Mm -hmm. um, and if we bold it and underline it, what what will happen is here are the steps of discovering your career. Okay, gain clarity. Oh, hire a coach. Okay, well, then what's our desire? What's the desire? What when I hire you as a coach to help me with my career change? What does that mean? What happens? Um, uh, it means you have someone on your team. You could say something like that. Um, it means that you're uh, you're going to have the right tools uh, to to get where you need to go. Um, yeah. Okay. So you're talking about results. Yep. We we okay. want to make this guy a hero. We want him to be or or lady to be just ecstatic. I, I'm just throwing in filler stuff. That we don't have to go with this. I'm just we're we're collaborating. Yep. So th this is a uh, this is good. So so yeah, I I don't have direct uh, um, percentages on on that that I could that I could say um, necessarily, but. Um, Yeah, that, that looks great. Okay. Um, and one thing you might do is I, I know there's probably already research out there for how coaches and mentors uh, and the impacts and effects. So and mm -hmm. that's a few queries to find what this number or what this desire might be. Yeah, totally. All right. So then what, what do we want them to do? What? All right. You've convinced me. I want a job 85% faster. Uh, and I want to win the interview because I haven't interviewed in a few years. I'm, I'm a little bit rusty. How can I win the interview? What do I need to do, Jeff? Yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm looking to you on this one. So on a, in an email like this, would I be um, offering a free call? Would I be directing them to a blog post or a video that I've created on the subject? Um, you know, something like this where I'm trying to get them to hire me. This, this seems a little more direct rather than just a, a content marketing. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. This is, this so, is a very direct sales. So thing. let's go right to uh, schedule a free coaching call uh, to get started on the right path or something like that. Urgency. There you go. Yep. And we got that urgency. And we got that in urgency. So for for you and your audience, one thing we might be able to do is extend the interest section a little bit. Is extend that interest section. So we could say, uh, recently I worked with Bob and we were able to help them implement a proven strategy and he was able to get an interview with IBM within two weeks of us working together. Cool. That yeah, a little case study that replaces desire completely. Because there's a, there's a proven or you're using an example. Yep. Yep. And you might even say, be like Bob. That that's really <laughs> tongue in cheek. Um, I, I wouldn't fully recommend that, but that's, that's the, that's the essence. That's the core, the nuance that we want to illustrate and describe is, we want you to be like Bob. Work with me, and when you work with me, this works. Okay, cool. 
Um, then I'm going to take this, I'm going to drop it into Grammarly. <laughs> oh, okay, so just some punctuation stuff. Cool. Um, it's probably that uh, story section. Yeah, that's the story section it doesn't like. So, I mean, tweak, massage. Um, there's issues there, of course. They probably didn't like my hyphen. I, I like hyphens to break up the content sometimes and break up ideas. Um, that's my writing style. A lot of people will differ. Um, you know. So we're gonna continue, we're gonna send this to, to our list of three people. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and send. And then I actually wanna go back. I actually missed a step that I forgot. And that's my bad, I apologize for that. Um, I'm gonna go this guy, mock up. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this test because it, um, that way it makes sure it hits my inbox because those other email addresses don't hit my inbox. Um, perfect. Hey, actually, that that hit pretty solid. All right, so client website notifications, perfect. All right, the right fit career st step U. Oh, okay. I I actually like that. It, it truncates it a little bit in Outlook, but I'm okay with it. Discover the path out of your tedious routine. Um, the next words are view email. Um, so maybe we do need to make this uh, line a little bit longer. Uh, we, can, we can test for that, we can fix for that. Action, uh, attention, here are the steps of discovering your next career. Gain clarity. We, we elongated this section, this is optional. Find a job. When, when it comes to an illustrated story versus a direct desire, it depends on the point of the email. Sometimes you do need something a little bit more direct for some audience, and sometimes you need to warm up the audience a little bit more before you uh, hit them too hard uh, with a sales pitch. Um, so that, that is your prerogative. Um, it, it's up to you to see what works best. Um, we're, we're running a little bit out of time, but is this helpful? Is this useful? Is this interesting? Do you have questions? Yeah, this is good. I appreciate that, Adam, working with me on that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So that being said, I will pop back to this guy. Um, oh, come on. I think that was everything we we're gonna hit. Thank you for attending. Um, once again, if you haven't been able to work, oh, Sir so Aziz, how important is it to have another set of eyes on the newsletter before you publish it? Yeah, so I, I think my, uh, we always recommend having another set of eyes, whether that's another person in the office or your mom, uh, or a trusted advisor. Um, the best way if you're solo to work through it is to read backwards, um, like I illustrated earlier. Um, odds are you're always going to have something a little bit out of alignment um, and that's okay. We want to build that muscle memory and to be, begin to learn from those errors and those and building processes to fix it. Um, Sarah, I always put pictures in mind. I notice you are not. Is it best to only use text? Absolutely. Go ahead and use pictures. And in my Yeti Tumblr example, um, I actually do think a picture of a Tumblr would be fantastic. Uh, if I get to this drawing thing again, I, I do think a, oh, that's not what it's like. A picture like right here would be perfect. I, I do think a picture would be good to help illustrate that and have people work through it more. Um, just to illustrate the products. Um, a lot of our emails, we do have 
um, a core sentence, a picture, um, and I always try to have a pun with the picture uh, because I want people to feel like we're approachable. Um, a lot of people get concerned, oh my gosh, it's a, it's a marketing agency or a marketing firm. It's like, man, we, we want to talk to people. We want to help people. We're not here to uh, charge like lawyers is the example I always use. Um, but we're, we're here to help. We want to be an asset. Um, so I always have things in there to try and make us approachable um, as a general habit. And that, that's where we use a lot of puns, um, even in our slides today. Um, having the right tools. Um, we, we really, really want to be approachable and have that as our general consensus. So uh, any other questions before we close out for today? Uh, I do apologize, it ran a little bit long, but I think this was very, I, I have fun. We, we like doing this, we like engaging. Um, and we'll be sending out a recording with the slides a little bit later. Um, I don't see any other questions coming into chat. So thank you all so much for your time today. Uh, we're once again here to help. Feel free to reach out. Have a wonderful day. It's beautiful outside. So take care.